it is. What's happening? So, today, this evening, is uh, my favorite time of the year. Make sure I got the right line. Brake lines and fuel lines is what we're working on tonight on the J10. So what I'm going to do right now is this truck, because it's carbureted, it has a fuel line, which is 5 sixteenths, and it has a return line at a quarter inch. Now, I just got done making that line, and I just got done making the brake line. It goes to the rear. So what I'm going to do now is i got to get rid of one of these fittings because the lines that come out of the tank and hook to this line are just rubber and has hose clamps. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this and get rid of this furrow. Now, I could have bought... A brass piece with a nipple on it to slide the hose on but it costs more money so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this off and i'll show you what we're going to do so this is one of my favorite brake line flaring tools that i have so first thing we're going to do is we're going to find what we did with the tubing cutter and we're going to get rid of this flare so let's do that real quick now, a lot of times on my videos, you know, you don't really get a chance to see me actually working and doing something. So I figured I'd show a little something that I do here on the lines. Cut this bad boy off. No, the film's not speeded up. That's just me working. Now, I always save these nuts. Keep a bag of them. And I always keep them inside this flaring tool so I have them. So now what I'm going to do is this tool makes double flares so where did the other die go there it is so that was quarter inch that we just did what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use the first part of this die Let's see make sure i grab five sixteenths that's five sixteenths and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a little bit of a a bump on this that way when you put your hose on and you clamp it down it can't accidentally or mysteriously just pop off so we'll put it in our brake line flare tool here we're just going to do the first part of the flare. And I'll show you here in a second what it looks like. And it'll make sense once you see it. see here in the video see how it's got now it's got a little bump on the end that's the this tool makes double flares so that's actually the first step when you make a double flare the second step you would use this and what that does is it pushes in there and it rolls that edge in for your double flare but what I like to do is I'll make this bump so that way when you slide your hose on and you clamp it down it can't pull back off because now it has a little bump on the end there to prevent it from coming off and i know there's gonna be somebody in the comments is gonna say well you can just bought brass fittings well brass fittings and parts are getting expensive these days so any which way that you can save yourself a couple of dollars it's worth it even this brake line has gone up in price i, I bought two pieces of five sixteenths two pieces of quarter inch one three sixteenths a couple of unions and I had $60 in line. That's crazy. So if you add the fact that I go and buy more brass fittings, we're gonna be at a hundred dollar bill and all we're doing is making brake lines and fuel lines. It's ridiculous what stuff's going up to be. So there's a little tip that'll help you the next time you're making a line, a fuel line that you just wanna hose the slide over. Or I do this when I make transmission lines that are gonna hook to a trans cooler with a rubber hose. I'll make this. That way the hose can't blow off if the clamp's tight. And that's a little tip. Oops. That's a little tip I'm going to give you for the season. So now we're going to go out there. And I hate how they put the tags on here. So now we're going to go out here. We're going to bend up some line and finish up uh, making fuel lines. Let's walk out. So we're actually under the truck right now. I'm laying on a creeper. Like I said, a lot of times I just bring you guys along and talk about what I've done. I figured I'd just give a little demonstration on making lines. Now these here, 
This one here is our brake line. This is our fuel return line, which goes across through this cross member over here. And then our gas tank sits here. So our line just makes a 45 up here. And then that will make our rubber hose connection because that's how it was from the factory. So what I'm going to do is, now what I did here to bolt all these together, to make them nice and clean, um, these are actually factory clips right here that held the wiring harness in. And these are actually identical to what a lot of tractor trailers and uh, car trailers and stuff will use the same kind of clip. They're just frame clips to hold wiring harnesses. But believe it or not, this actually, these are actually, even though you can buy these aftermarket, these are actually factory on these Jeeps. So I took them all and I cleaned them all up. Cleaned them all up, painted them with my favorite rust paint. So they're nice and clean and put them back on. That's how the harness was originally. Then what I did was uh, treat yourself to some of these Harbor Freight. And these are awesome. Um, yeah, you could get them at any Napa or anywhere else, but uh, I think the whole box is like five bucks at that uh, Harbor Freight. So then I ran. Now this hole here, I did drill in a frame. This was an existing hole. I run a long quarter inch bolt through uh, with washers on each side, and then was able to bolt these down. Now what I'm going to do next is my five sixteenths line. I'm going to place one of these clamps. I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration. My 5 16th line, which is our fuel line, is going to sit right about there. And I'm going to use that same existing bolt and bolt it right on here. I think it'll look good. Um, I think it'll uh, look clean and neat. we got to put uh, got another one up in here. I need to fish a bolt in. Uh, we're going to do something up there with the harness. It's just laying up there because this frame here is boxed in. So we're going to, up here, somehow if I get the light to sit, sit somewhere so I can see. Uh, there's an existing hole in the frame right here where I'm going to bolt these together. And then again, the 5 16 line will just kind of run along the top. And let's take a walk up here. Front. You can see there's our portion valve, all nice and cleaned up. And we got our back line. Our two lines here come down from up top. This one goes here, and then this one here goes across that way and around the other side. And that'll neaten it up and clean it up and make it look good. Now, as you can see, we do have some floor work to do down the road. But somebody was nice enough to uh, take the time and cut the rust out and then they just screwed a piece of sheet metal down. And you know, at the end of the day, it's not really the right fix, but at least they cut the rust out and screwed something down. So the rust isn't gonna travel or spread. And what's nice about these Jeeps is, these old Jeep Wagoneers and the Cherokees, they got a bunch of floor cross, cross braces that go across and they're all solid on this truck. So it's just the actual floor, the flat, Part of the floor so that's an easy fix we'll do maybe over the winter right now like i've said a hundred times and i had somebody today on one of the jeep groups give me a raft of crap because we welded this frame back together why didn't you put a frame under i've got good frames out here out west i'm on the east coast i'm not shipping a frame for this toilet back to the east coast and not only that we do have a good frame for this toilet but we don't have time for a full frame slot we wanted to get to an jeep event that happened last week Unfortunately, we did not make it. It just wasn't in the cards. There was just too much work to do to this truck. Um, so I'm using my old theory of when you've got a major project like this, try to spend an hour each day or every other day doing something to said project. And you'll be surprised how fast things will start to move. So I've got a job inside the shop that I need to work on, but I told myself I'm gonna spend an hour out here tonight um, I'm running on about almost two hours now, but um, if I spend a little bit of time each night on it, or at least every other night, um, you'll be surprised how much further along your project will move. And this is a project that 
spun a little bit out of control and that's number one reason why I did not want to put a frame under this truck because this project would have spun a hundred times out of control. I didn't want to get into painting the entire frame but once we got the rear half cleaned up I said let's just clean the front half up and blow some paint on it and here we are cleaning the, the proportion valve, cleaning all the brackets, everything that bolts to the frame. And originally I did not want to go that far with this project. I wanted to just blow it together and have some fun with it, but we went a little bit further. But we're okay, because now we're on the other side of the spectrum where we're starting to put things back together. Luckily this truck only has 47,000 original miles, so motor and trans are pretty tight in it. I am going to replace the trans pan gasket and um, service the trans just for the fact that it's a 79 and I'm pretty positive it's never been opened up. So we want to service it. Uh, the pan's a little wet. I don't know if it's from, it does have an oil leak back of the pan or possibly rear main seal. I'm not quite sure. We're going to run her and we're going to see how bad it leaks. It may even seal up and stop leaking because it hasn't been running much. We'll address that when we get to that. Right now, let's get some brake lines on this toilet and uh, some fuel lines so that we can set the bed back on. So let me get making on this one here and um, I'll show you what we got. Okay, so kind of cut a bend up there. Get inside the frame here with strongs. It's the worst part is it passes through that cross member. So you might need a little tweaking. That's okay. There we go. That's how we're going to sit in there. And that's not too hateful. That's not too hateful at all. So, we'll get our, I believe that's our 5 16ths. Let's see here. 5 16 clamp. These things work really nice. They kind of give you for a nicer, cleaner job. That doesn't look too hateful. I can live with that. We're not built, we're not built, we're not doing a uh, restoration piece here. We're just, we're just fixing a turd. I think that's gonna look nice. And again, I forgot a ratchet. I'll tell you, up and down, up and down. It's old, and I've been at work all day working on late model junk, so it's nice to come home to work on an old piece of junk. Kind of gives me my sanity. People ask me all the time, how do you work on cars all day and then come home and work on junk? Well, when you're working on something like this, it's not like working on a late model car that has to be done today. I don't care if this gets done today, tomorrow, next week. It doesn't matter to me. Especially now, since we missed the, the Jeep show in Ocean City, we really wanted to take this. But, I mean, we took we took the girlfriend's Wrangler. We had a good time. Uh, there is another Jeep show coming up here towards the end of this month, September. Uh, if we get this thing back together, at least running, we may get it up there. Um, that one's at Dover Downs, at the Dover Downs racetrack, which is kind of cool. You actually get to drive on the uh, Dover Downs Raceway. Now, see, that looks nice and clean and neat. That doesn't look like a hillbilly did it, even though a hillbilly did do it. I got to figure out what I'm going to do back here. Because back here, when you go through this cross member, there's nothing really holding them together. So I haven't quite figured out what I want to do. I did give this one a little tweak, but I don't like how it's, I don't like that. So I've got to figure, i got to figure something out. Um, I have a couple ideas in my head. I might make a little bracket and then bolt them all together in here or here or something. I 
couldn't even do it over here. Actually, I could probably do it here. But we're going to figure something out. Something similar to this, but over here. Now, now if you noticed, they stick up. So now I got my return line, I got my main line. And that's actually how they were from the factory. They just kind of went this way. Rubber hose, and the tank sits in this area right here. Tank actually is bolted to the bed on this truck, which is kind of weird, but kind of neat. So, that's kind of cool. Um, something else I've done, let me crawl out of here and I'll show you. So that's our uh, rear brake line, quarter inch. Um, it actually does come up like this originally from the factory. I added this to keep it from vibrating. And then it comes down. Let me give me some light here so you can see, because it's dark out here. It goes up there through the frame, just like I originally did. Now something else I did to this truck, which it's kind of neat, maybe some people will understand what it is. This right here, I use these on all my tow trucks. Tractor trailers use these. This is a junction box. So it gives you places to run your wires. So what I'm gonna do is, this will go in here like so, and then I'll run all my wires to here, and then I'm gonna rewire out. And the reason I'm doing that is because all the wiring is hacked up really bad on the back of this truck from a trailer hitch. So now I'll be able to put nice ends on them in this watertight box, you know, brake light, tail light, turn signal, ground, yada, 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 so on and so forth. And then I can run wires in through here that will all just bolt on here and then go out to said lights, marker lights, tail lights, tag lights, such. Then if I want to add trailer wiring, it'll be real easy just to tap in here. There's another spot I can come out of right here or right here, one there. Um, there's even one right here, which I probably won't use, and there's one down here on the bottom. So what's nice is I'll be able to come out of this box um, if I want to add trailer wiring, which I'm not going to on this truck. It's just I'm not going to tell a trailer with it. But if I wanted to add to it, it's real easy to add to it. I use these boxes on all the tow trucks. Prime example, this one will get one as well. Because what happens with these old tow trucks is when they build these trucks, they come from the factory as a cab and chassis. Basically, they come to the tow truck companies like this. Wiring is just kind of looped up, and they hack into them and splice into them. And almost every old tow truck, the wiring is a hack job like you wouldn't believe. I rewired. You probably can't see it now. There you go. You can somewhat see the old rollback. I've owned that rollback almost 20 years. It's a 93 F450 diesel, five-speed, yada, yada. I rewired the whole back half of that truck when I bought it. And in 20 years, I ain't touched it. Now, I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm not saying I'm a bad MF'er, but it's fixed. It's fixed right. Never had an issue with the wiring. In fact, I had to go back into that box a couple years ago because I added a trailer plug on the back of that rollback so that I could plug in a, um, I have a wireless tow light. So if I'm putting a second car on the truck, I can plug in the wireless thing and the magnetic light sits on the back of wherever you're towing. So that's where I'm at with the Jeep project. I just wanted to give some kind of update to you guys of what's going on with the Jeep. I know a lot of people have been interested in the uh, J10 slash J20 was what it's gonna be when I'm done. But it was funny on one of the groups on uh, the old social media. Everybody's an expert. Everybody's an expert. Uh, and I knew that I was just waiting for it. That somebody was going to come out of the woodwork and tell me, you can't fix that frame. You can't weld it. Or why are you not doing it? it a thousand reasons. Bottom line is, I've said it a hundred times on, so far that I've been working on this toilet. This was not a restoration project. We were pushing forward to try to get it to a show have some fun with it someday someday when other said projects on the channel are done that i might put a frame on it because i know what's going to happen i'm one of those people that just can't leave everything alone i can't just half-ass something together it drives me insane uh, while i'm why i'm doing going a little little overboard on brakes and wiring and this project was never supposed to be this involved and unfortunately it's gotten a little more involved than what I want to do but it is what it is it's going to be nice when it's done even though the frame's been fixed and it doesn't scare me it's fish plated on the inside it's welded it's not going anywhere we're not towing with this truck we're going to do some light wheeling it's 
mostly beach stuff because we live at the beach. And unfortunately, when you live at the beach, everything gets rusty. It sucks. I only have so much inside storage. I'm actually working on this thing in my carport, which is next to my shop, uh, that eventually someday this area here, this, I'm going to move this carport to the other side of the property, and I'm going to add on to this building. I'm going to put a big oversized bay with super tall ceiling because this new shop doesn't have the height that I really, really want. Uh, it works. I mean, don't get me wrong. We've got, we've got cars in there. We're working on stuff. We're getting stuff done. Uh, it's dark out, yes. I was just going to take a quick walk and show you guys. Or some for the new guys. Um, we got a lift in there. We've got raised ceiling. It works. It works for cars. It doesn't work for trucks very well. Um, but, you know, sometimes you got to sacrifice some stuff. We sold the other house, the other shop and everything to move to the beach. Uh, much happier down here. We've got a nice shop. We've got plenty of room. We've got a building over there, but we want to add on to that side. That's the plan. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe in the spring. I don't know. We'll see. Right now, I've got other projects I want to get done, other crap. Um, you know, it's never ending. So, uh, something else. Let's see. We put the motor in this little Chevy Wrecker. It's alive and running. Look at that thing. That's a powerhouse. So that thing is just a 305 Chevy. It is a new motor. Um, it's 20 over. Uh, it's a stock. Now somebody's going to ask me, why did I put a 305 in this truck? Well, number one, I had this motor. This was a complete running motor. If you go back on some of my reels and uh, my short videos, you'll see I had this actually running on the engine stand. This motor was actually for another project that I have. Um, but I'm shifting gears on that project. So when I bought this truck, this truck was motorless. And since this was a complete, complete, other than we got to find all air brackets. I do have the water pump and we got to find pulleys. This was a complete engine, just how you see it sitting on the stand running. This truck was missing a motor because I bought it without a motor. Uh, I'm going to fix this truck. This is actually, to me, this is a, a truck worth fixing. This is actually a decent truck. It's a solid truck. I know it doesn't have any doors. That's how I bought it. It was the deal I made with my buddy. He kept the motor and he kept the doors. And I actually ended up pulling the motor and the doors because he's got some health issues. But that's a super nice guy. Just, you know, it is what it is. So, this motor was going to go in the 54 Dodge tow truck that I have with the hand crank boom on it. But that truck. I'm going to take it off of its original frame and we're going to put it on a four wheel drive high boy frame that I have out back. So more likely since it's a Ford, it's going to get a Ford motor and trans, which opened up that motor for that toilet. A lot of toilets around here, a lot of flush to do. So look, I'm going to end the video there because the, uh, the old uh, phone here just said to me that it's got the low batteries. So the batteries is low and it's time to turn it off. So look, holla at your boy, keep it reels. And as um, soon as I get some more stuff done on the Jeep, I'll bring you guys along. I'd like to show you a little bit more of some of the stuff I'm making. Uh, a lot of guys struggle at brake lines. It's really not that hard. Just I, I've been doing it for so long that I can look at something and know how I want it to run. Uh, buy yourself a really nice, don't skimp on a tool for bending brake lines. Uh, I actually have several different ones and my favorite one to this day is this one here from Snap-on. Um, it's actually a pretty nice one. I actually wore the other one out to the point I, they had to replace it. It was covered on a warranty, but I wore it out. It, it gets wore out right in here where it pivots. And then it starts, this one's got some play in it already. I actually wore it out. Uh, quarter inch and three sixteenths, I can bend it with my hands and make a nice crisp line. Five sixteenths and three eighths, no, you're not going to be able to bend it with your hand and the bends are going to look sloppy. So get you a nice, there's a ton of them on the market. There's a hundred different brands. 
Somebody I know is going to say, oh, I got this one from Eastwood. I got this one from Harbor Freight. That's fine. Find one that you like. I personally like this guy. There's a bunch of them on there. Find one that you like. Take your time. Use a magic marker where you want to, or a Sharpie, and mark it where you want it bent. Like if you want to put a bend here, I usually take a little line, and then I, I put it, I know that my little line's going to go right here, and I get a nice bend. Perfect. So, like I said, I'm going to end the video. I'm done rambling on. I want to get on there and finish this line up for the night, uh, and then I'm going to go put some time in on that Honda. And it, it's going to end up being like a 10, 11 o'clock night tonight, unfortunately. But sometimes it, it'd be like that. How's your boy? Keep it reals.